Okay, first of all, please do not adjust your sets. We are under the umbrella, Ella, Ella, on the east side of the patio on a beautiful summer's day. I cannot tell you. I have done cartwheels around the patio this morning because I knew it was time to repot Rinkodendrum Cavalgata in Verde. She has been in the planning since I did my supplies video. So I planned for this orchid to be repotted this year in 2023 with all the considerations that come with this orchid. A, she is a rambler. She has a long rhizome. She grows two new growths per year her roots can go aerial all that fun stuff i have a massive pot for her ready i've got the lecker ready got the orchids soaking in cow mag and seaweed at a concentration of 500 parts per million because as far as i'm concerned there will be no dividing this orchid today so if you are up for it this is going to be just a repot that's the plan we never really know if that is all there is to it until we get into the pot but as far as I can tell from where I'm stood, <laughs> this should be a pretty straightforward reed pot. And I hope you stick around and join me for this. If you're one of the ones that stuck around, thank you for clicking on the video. Thank you for still being here. Thank you for keeping me company. So we've done the soak. I'm going to get her tags out. I don't think she's pot bound, but who knows? And I need to get my sprayer. Duh. <laughs> sprayer. <laughs> Not only that, I didn't bring out my water. And of course, if you need water, you need a pitcher. Oh, too excited to get into this project, seeing as it has been long anticipated. Now we're good to go. So. We had a wonderful time with her during the winter. Thankfully, nothing, let's say, startled her too much. I am concerned about the very, very thin pseudobulbs, but I'm very happy to see branching of the root tips, so I'm gonna take advantage of that. This growth, this lead, has never really bloomed for me. <laughs> we did lo lose a leaf right here, a phenomenon that's been happening in my collection, also with other orchids, and yeah. At least this growth may bloom for us. We shall have to wait and see how she reacts to this repot. We lost a pseudobulb in the back, but I'm not freaked out about that. I would say normal. It's the oldest pseudobulb, thank goodness. I've had a few other funky things happening with pseudobulbs that have other reasons, but this one is just age. So as far as I'm concerned, she should come out relatively easily. She's been in this pot now two years, at least maybe even three but at least two years and she's not that strong at the base so i need to be careful but i don't think i need to get my hammer out she's not that tight whatever she's resisting is down with the microfiber oh i'm so excited to get into this pot as i repot if you have any questions at all is what you're seeing if i'm not explaining something properly if you're thinking ah look at all those dead roots yeah it's no biggie. Some orchids just dump their roots. And some people will say, well, that's the setup. And I will beg to disagree. Not in this case. This is just an orchid that does have the tendency of dumping her roots. And that is why we're going to deal with her today. But at least it explains the shriveled pseudobulbs. But you see this? <laughs> Let me get you in. Who doesn't like a set of nice, juicy root tips? So, this is going to be all A-OK. -okay. Not bothered. Now, I do have a lot of fern roots in here. Clearly, ferns absolutely love semi-hydro. So, if you have a house plant, if you like your ferns, but they don't do well for you, may I recommend semi-hydro, self-watering, and LECA, because <laughs> you can see that, yes, I've been weeding away, but you can see all these little black roots in here. All these ones, that's not dead steely. And that is fern roots. And we just got a rogue LECA bead, which I have to retrieve for reasons of a four-legged furry friend who takes 
very much interest into anything that drops on the floor, even if it doesn't look like kibble. <laughs> okay. Now, the only thing I'm trying to do is make sure that if I tease all the lecker out where I can, then I don't have to be fussing around where do I aim my snips at, because we're going to go in radical. Ooh, this is going to be so satisfying. So satisfying. I love me a repot like this. This is... This is what, for me, orchid dreams are made of. I'm not freaked out about dead roots. She says, and then watch, in six months. But no, I hope not. I hope I don't jinx that just because I'm confident about the fact that these roots do what they do. This orchid has a life cycle, and roots have a life cycle of their own as well. But while we took off the dead pseudobulb in the back, let me make sure that it is clean because we've had a few surprises in the past that I didn't suspect anything, and then, booyah, quelle surprise. Tis clean, tis clean, tis a bit woody, that's to be expected, being that it is the oldest. So, now, I am just going to get you in a little bit closer and wash my hands. Let's give this a first little dose of cinnamon. It's going to get wet again, but we can be liberal, no matter if the powder goes everywhere. Of course, I'm being mindful of the root tips over here, but in the back, it's coming off. For the most part, it's coming off. I don't want to be too gung-ho about it. We'll see. Maybe this one is going to be completely different to the Catlianthus Siamese doll kiwi, where I left quite a bit of dead roots on for anchoring. Maybe we can just be radical with this one and make it one of those clean chop-chop jobs. There we go. As long as I stay standing, we can do this. And let's be a little bit more careful because even though they look nasty, there could be some viable ones in between. So we'll, we'll do the squeezy squeezy, the double test to make sure that they are in actual fact dead. And if the velamen comes off like that, it's a guarantee. But I did just cut a good root off. Going by the assumption, it's looking nasty. Well, as with many things in the world, looks aren't everything. This is gonna be so satisfying. So I'm just going to go around the perimeter and take everything off to a certain height where it's clear that the lower ones are dead. So I can get in there and we are going to clean this orchid off and free it from all the fern roots. If you've been with my channel for a while, you know I just can't stand <laughs> these black things. Not that they are harming the orchid. It's just, oh, uh, you want it clean. You don't want those in there. And that will also eradicate maybe another one of them to come up this season. While during the summer I've been letting the ferns grow, but in the winter I do have to do weeding and clearly I can't get the root ball out, otherwise I'll be yanking good roots out at the same time, so you don't want to be doing that. So it's, it's a good time to get in there and deal with them. You know what? I would so appreciate a like. A like, a subscribe, a share, all that fun stuff that YouTube needs to have so that the algorithm will eventually find my channel. I feel as though I'm in the black hole in the cyber sphere of YouTube. I feel a little bit incognito over here in southern Spain. I would love to get my channel out to a bigger audience and if you could help me do that, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Look at this. You mesky mesky. Oh, I'm so in the mood to be radical. So we've got a light one right here, which we shall maintain. And we've got a very soft one here. Ooh, isn't this fun? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I find such satisfaction. You've been looking at an orchid for a while and you're like, yeah, yeah, come on, come on you. 
show me that you're ready and then it happens and then it's a beautiful day on top of that and mm, except for the umbrella i know it gives us sort of a sepia hue because it's kind of it's a sand color above me but i hope it's okay i hope you can see okay i didn't want to wait until later in the afternoon because that is when siliano comes out to play so that looks like a root tip but it's the steely up here yep that's all dried out so we'll just take it back for confirmation yep we guessed that one right and now we're going to be a little bit more careful because we're coming into the good stuff as in root tips etc i would love for this orchid to bloom on both her leads that would be a first and I'm sure it's not going to happen this year after we're doing what we're doing to her now. <laughs> if in doubt, cut the root halfway before going all the way like I did earlier on. Just to be on the safe side because as you can see it's a branching root system. So if you make a mistake like I did earlier on just by going straight for the base. At least if you make a mistake and you just cut the root that you assume is dead. If you just cut that halfway and it happens to be alive, it's giving you some grace and then it can branch. Yeah, this is a little bit more approach with caution here. We want as much of this to come into the new pot. See this tiny, tiny little speck there? I hope I'm gonna zero in on that. That is a branching root, even though the steely at the end here is dead but it is alive where it's branching and we're gonna just make sure that we don't lose it. But down here, ooh, there's a network of mess. Ick. 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 <laughs> Good fun most satisfying so we've already addressed that one there we'll leave that one well alone we have a little bit more ick to go right here Ooh, there's a beautiful root tip coming out right at the base oh yes look at that right there oh my goodness i love me discoveries like this now, I have every intention with the pot size I've chosen for her <laughs> to not have to do this again until 2025. Maybe even pushing it to 2026. That would be awesome. Because she was in a 20 centimeter pot and she's going into a 27 centimeter pot. That is a massive, massive size jump. But because I'm growing in inorganic media, it should work out just perfectly. It's not going to break down. As long as the orchid can hold on through my cold winters, it's going to be just fine. It's just the winters I'm absolutely wary of. So at least she and her timing for new root growth is coming through clutch. Right timing is importante, especially seeing as I have a couple of months of nice warm weather as yet to go. And we can pump her up with some strength. Look at that. <laughs> I'll just cut off the dead bit there. We just pump her up with some strength so that she can then ride out that cold winter again. And that's why I upped the CalMag here to 500 parts per million. Now, her current root system, well, the one that she's going to be left with, is obviously not going to be absorbing that amount of nutrients. So I'm going to be piping back down to my 300 parts per million. But for the most part, this root system by September will be able to handle a very high concentration of calcium and magnesium, which I will administer for September and October in preparation of the winter. Low light levels, the magnesium will help and then of course the calcium just to make sure that no cells 
die back. You see the spotting here in the back of the leaves? That is cold damage right there in the back. So it had me freaked out. And it took out probably the leaf of the newest growth from last year while this growth started to mature, which was very upsetting. I was extremely concerned it was going to go the way my mailman have gone and that weird growth just dying back on my golf green hair pig. Very, very freaked out, I can tell you. I'm not gonna be a hero here, but seeing those kinds of growths, if they come like that in the wrong position, that's no bueno. That is a cause for alarm. Okay, oh, we still have some back here. You're still holding on tight. You're hugging that piece of lecker so you can keep doing that. I have to be careful because there's no more cushioning. I've taken everything off that's like a nice little cushion for the root tips. All that is gone. So now we just have to proceed with caution around this area right here. Okay, a moment of silence there. <laughs> you can see that my multitasking skills, there's still room for improvement there. Concentrating and talking, uh, sometimes it doesn't work out too well. Woohoo! I'll give the rhizome a good little rinse. See if we have any visuals that we need to assess a little bit further and scrutinize in greater detail. That's it for the clean rhizome. I'm going to do one more dab of cinnamon, even though the orchid will get wet again, because when we potter up, we are going to be using the submerged method with my floaty doty, allowing the lecker just to fall around. Not really necessary when you look at this orchid right now, hey? There's no real roots here to protect, but ooh, 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 the ones we have to protect, muy importante, we protect their velamen, like down here, stop touching the root tips with the lecker. No abrasions. Okay, I'm gonna do a switcheroo with my tray and be back with my beautiful big clean pot. Maybe the pitcher is a little bit obsolete, judging by the size of this pot. <laughs> okay, we'll just fill it halfway, seeing as the majority of what's gonna go in here now before the orchid even has a chance to be positioned is lecker. All right, I've just recycled my support in here for a smaller pot into this massive pot simply by putting Lekka right at the bottom. Don't need a new support. And we're just lifting the support up and resting it on a level that we like. And then we continue filling with Lekka. I brought myself the biggest bucket, filled it with large Lekka that has been soaking for probably a year now. The PPM after a year of the Lekka water was 400. So this is as clean as it's going to get. I haven't done a water exchange on the Lekka I'm using today since a year and it only accumulated 400 parts per million. That screams clean Lekka to me. Meanwhile, prior to this repotting project, I did, as a matter of fact, change the water out because <laughs> why not? Let's get it super duper clean. And the reason I chose this pot is because of my rambling orchid. The rambling format, the long rhizome. And I'm hoping that my intuition is going to work in the favor of this orchid and myself because I want to use the diagonal of the pot. Something like that. Ideally, I want actually these roots to be going in. <laughs> so plans and plans, and then there's reality. While these are aerial roots, it's really not that big a deal to pot them up because the orchid is an active growth. It could actually trigger them to branch. So right now, 
Yeah, because the roots take precedent. I'm back here with this lead. And I'm already up front here with the other lead. Oh, we've got the diagonal, so let's keep going and see where we end up. Make myself a little teepee over there. So while in the summer I don't have a problem with the rhizome being down with the leka, I do want to make sure that I keep an eye on that rhizome because I don't want to forget it's there. That's the only reason right now I'm taking the leka away from this area just so that I make sure my eyes don't lose focus on that. Zorkid has shown me by the spotting on the back of her leaves that she does not appreciate my cold temperatures. So I do not want to exacerbate, provoke any rot when the time comes. There's never a guarantee, but at least I can try to preempt something from happening just by being a little bit more vigilant. Okay, I'm gonna be jiggling the orchid. So I acted too soon. I want, I want no lecker around any root tips, not for now. She is so loose in the pot, she's only just resting on the surface of the media. And as I tie her up, there will be movement. So these new root tips, I want to keep them free of any form of lecca. I think we did well, <laughs> time will tell, but no, I'm more concerned as mentioned about the root tips. I saw that this growth was lowering itself as I was tying the orchid off. The whole premise of this tying off is to make sure that I have one stable side, which is this pseudobulb, bringing in the other side because this orchid being very wobbly now, when I take her out for flushing, take her off the shelf, I don't want the long leaves up here to catch. Bringing in these now somewhat desiccated pseudobulbs into a curve because winter is coming, shelf space is an issue, the pot size here is 30% larger, so we're all in a little bit of a, let's say, a puzzle funk for when the winter comes. But I still have these roots buried, and I hope they get the hint. Any branching, please go down. I shall encourage that with regular flushing. Just make sure they know that gravity is pulling them down. Right here by my root tips, we are going to just surround them with a lot of humidity. There's some root tips right over here as well. We're just gonna make sure that they don't get any funny ideas and think that they can come up and surface like they were trying to do in the other pot. But there's enough going on in this pot space-wise that I do believe I would at least get 30% of the new roots going down. That's the plan here. While I drained her, I just want to show you that this is plain RO water, but because of her heavy, high concentration soak that she had prior to the repot, I'm not going to change this water, that's just wasteful. The fact that she doesn't have any roots in the pot as well, you see how tall this pot is? You see the level of the reservoir? I'm going to double that. I am bringing that water level up to almost the surface of the pot. And that is intentional. It's getting hotter and hotter. Yay for me. It's getting dry and drier. No yay for the orchids. That's not good. So I'm bringing the humidity level up to the base as best as possible. And that will encourage the roots to go down, I would say, quicker. Seeking out that humidity so I don't lose them to a warm, dry wind in a moment of not paying attention if I'm not on the patio or otherwise distracted with the beautiful activity of editing. And yes, while I do that at night, <laughs> summertime when the living is easy. You know, warm temperatures at night. <laughs> now, what I should have done right at the beginning before unpotting this orchid was clean my leaves while she was still somewhat solid in the pot. I am not going to do that now because that would be adding more jiggle and yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> I have a feeling we'll be revisiting this orchid in two years. I don't think she's going to make it three years in this pot. 
And that rhizome, even with that large diagonal, yeah, I'm giving it two years and in year three, we will be back. And then hopefully we can be back and hopefully she will stay alive. And you can see here now, these aerial roots are hydrating. They're getting nice and green. That should help this end recover because again, here's a growth down in here and that I'm hoping will bloom. And if not, at least we've got her this far at this time of year, which is also super important. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, once again, give it a like. If you would subscribe to the channel, if you haven't already done so, consider yourself super duper welcome. And thank you so, so much for watching. Just one last thing to say, have yourself a beautiful day on that one condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care, bye.